Don't act right. like you don't know that song, Kelly. We're live. We're live? Yep. And we'll see you. So I got the little circle going. Oh, action needed. No, we're live. We're still good? Oh. We are live, live. We're live, live, live. Yes. So good afternoon, everyone. Today is Tuesday, March the 15th, I believe. Uh, and a nice, sunny March afternoon, or fastly approaching. So this is our, our uh, March uh, Facebook Live, our, our, our conversations, the chat with the chief, if you will. Um, we started this a couple years ago, and I think it's been very, very beneficial. I was not a big fan at first. I wasn't sure how it would play out, but um, the individuals in our media relations talk about technology and how, how, uh, uh, how, how important it is. So I, I have been a believer. I think it allows us to have some direct conversation. Uh, with our community and it, it, those that are able to tune in and watch a little bit or watch it in the middle of doing different things or, or maybe to go back and watch it at some point when you have a free time but really my intent is just to be transparent and open as much as i can and just talk to this community about the about the police department some of the things uh, where we're coming out of what things we're in the middle of and where we're headed right things that we're coming up to so uh, uh i will try to read every single post i will tell you that i will miss some uh, there might be a computer glitch or a Facebook glitch where uh, uh, one pops up that I didn't see, but my intent is to read every one. So at times, uh, Julie's helping me today. Uh, there will be times where I'll ask her to scroll back up that I want to make sure I read everything correctly. Uh, but I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited to be here with you and um, cut out this block just to talk to our citizens and our residents. You matter. I want you to know as much as you can about, about this department things we'll talk about is we'll talk about our recent homicide that we had, where we stand with homicides for the year. We'll talk about our shootings. Violent crime is going to be a big topic for us this year. We're going to talk about technology, our young adult police commissioners. We're going to talk about the good work that the men and women are doing in this profession. We'll talk about how we look on staffing, some challenges. We'll talk to you about some meetings that I've had uh, last week and this week. As a matter of fact, I just left one uh, with the, uh, the U.S. Attorney's Office, and, and those things are important, relationships and, and how we work together. So. Let me just hit the hit some of the, the individuals on board. Camera, I appreciate you being here today, my friend. You in school today, Camera? You supposed to be in school today, Camera? It's good to have you on board, my friend. I didn't get to see you last week, so I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Uh, Mary, afternoon to you. Thank you so much for being here. Sylvia, my friend, good to see you. Um, I haven't talked to you in a while. I hope things are well. I hope you're doing very good in your family, so I'm glad, glad you're on board today. Thank you. Christopher. Uh, good, uh, Christopher says, good afternoon, Chief. It was good seeing you last Monday. Christopher, it was great seeing you, my friend. I appreciate that uh, and appreciate you uh, uh, spending some time with us today uh, being on board. That, that means a lot. Uh, so what I'd like to do is just kind of, oh, Ms. Cox, thank you so much. And I think, uh, Ms. Cox, I think you're helping us out with our Use of Force Review Board coming up on Friday of this week. So I'm looking forward to seeing you and appreciate the help that you give us from your perspective. On, uh, on the use of force incidents that we have in our city and our review panel. So, um, Julie, on the middle of my screen, can you, can you hit that action needed, that X, and get that yeah. out of there? That's perfect. Very good. So, Ed, it was, we're, we're coming to you in our, our new setting, our new PIO office, our new media relations office. Uh, as as we, we move them upstairs to be closer to uh, the chief's office so I can interact with them more, get out more information, and just quicker response, and so they can come over and and give me a hard time like chief we need to get this out we need to say this so uh, I, I'm, I'm really excited to be here as we're remodeling this this office for them i think it's going to be a great benefit for us let me go back up there and from that and and that is that right thank you for being here Nettie. oh it's good to see you last weekend at the marathon Nettie, it was great to see you yeah we want to talk a little bit about the marathon what an event that was, it was long it was a long day but it, uh, that's always a great event, and I know it, I know it inconveniences some with traffic and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, uh, to see our citizens and our community come out together and encourage runners and encourage uh, the fun run with the kids was just a really, really great event. So it was a great weekend last week. Can we go back up? Yep. Right there. Uh, Parker, uh, I have a 10-year-old grandson that has anger issues and needs resources to help. Wow. So what a great, what a great, what a great question. So. Um, Ten-year-old grandson has anger issues, so um, we can certainly work with with resources. Um, I don't know. I, I, you know, I don't want to have 
put out personal information, but you know, I, I don't know if there's any counseling involved that you have now, but we certainly have, uh, we can work with human services. I would also ask, are you doing anything with the schools? Uh, sometimes, I'm not saying it's a fix all, but if you'd like to bring your grandson down to the police department, um, it's been a couple of times where myself and other officers had sat down with a young man or a, a young lady and just talk to them a little bit, uh, kind of get to know them a little bit. We take them on a tour of the building. Uh, we have three floors here and kind of let them see some of the things that we have, the technology and the way the floors laid out. And they would love to come in here and meet your relations and see, uh, maybe take a picture of them with the, the green screen behind them and, and um, just do some different things. So if that's something that you're interested in, uh, if you send us a number, uh, Eric, if you send us a number, um, we can reach out to you. And if that's something you'd like to do, I'm not, I'm not, but I just, it would be hard for me to say, we can get you in touch with some resources. I just like to know a little bit, you know, are we already, are you already doing anything with the schools? Are you doing anything with, uh, any, any particular counselors now? Uh, but I'd really love to meet you and, and, and your grandson and just have a conversation. If that's something you'd be interested in, I'll, I'll make myself available to you. Uh, we can do that on a Saturday, we can do it during the day, or, or we can do it in the evening when he gets out of school, or whatever works, but I'd really enjoy that. Um, not saying it'll fix anything, uh, but I'll be certainly willing to give my time to sit down and talk to you and, and him and just kind of and listen. You know, That's a great question. Uh, Annette, good to have you on board. Thank you. Some, Parker, I understand. Yep. Keith, it's good to have you back, my friend. Um, Chief from Henrico, hope all is well and Good afternoon, Chief. From Henrico, hope all is well in Newport News. Look forward to seeing you in Ashland for our event in May. Yeah, you know, we were just talking about that the other day, that we're going to come up there. And thanks for the invite. We said I'm going to do some recruiting. And, you know, look, Keith, you can't get mad if people up there start wanting to come to this city. There's a lot of good things going on here in Newport News, man. There is a lot of good opportunity and a lot of momentum, a lot of technology. So uh, you don't get mad if you look around and you see all these different departments. And you see this crowd around the Newport News tent, the Newport News booth. I'm just saying. But no, I look forward to it, and thank you for the opportunity to come up and, and interact. Uh, Krista, da. good afternoon, Chief. I met you. Okay, uh, so I've had a couple of meetings. I haven't been able to sit back and go through emails yet, but I will. After I, I get this, I'll sit down and try to grab a quick bite for lunch. Or it may just be a, right? It may just be a nice cold diet of Mountain Dew and catching up. But thank you very much, and thanks for being here today. Um, Parker, that's great. Yeah, let's just if you just send me a number, um, we we'll, uh, message us a, num a number. Met, is that the right correct? Yeah, message us her number Look, and we'll get it. I got to get the right phrase. If you message us a number, I'll uh, respond back to you. We'll get something set up. But I'd love to meet meet you all and, and him. Um, Robin, thank you for being here. Uh, Robin, I appreciate it. Well, it's good to have you. And the snowmail package. Say again, she's the one that sent the snowmail package. Oh, Miss Bannister is from yeah. up north. Yes. So, Robin. From New Hampshire, yeah. Robin. Robin, Robin, Robin. I got this fantastic package. I opened it up, and it had all this stuff about support police. It talked about uh, just caring about what officers do. And it's just really a letter of support and thank, thanking, thanking us for what we do. We put that in our newsletter. We took a picture of that and put it in our newsletter. If you, I think our newsletter is online, right? Could oh, you see I, we also started it on our social, on our Facebook page. Uh, on our, our, on our, on our, it was just, I really appreciate that. I, I, you know, for you to t sit down and take the time, and do that card and send the little items that you did, that, that means a lot. I shared it with uh, uh, the other assistant chiefs and our assistants, and then uh, we did post that. Uh, that was just really nice. It made my day, and I, that means a lot. So sometimes those little bit of encouragement, you know, can just get you over the hump and. I think God has a way of working things out, and it just kind of was just at a great time. So I just wanted to thank you for that. And I hope you're staying warm up there. I know it can get a little cold in the farther north you get, so I appreciate that. Uh, Joyce, hey, when will the daily incident reports be back up? I used to keep up with the crime in our neighborhoods. Thanks. Daily incident reports. Those are the on, online on our website. Are they still down? Um, I believe they are. They are still down. So, so Joyce, I know we, we had a new we did have a new system. There's been some glitches that we're trying to work out with our end and the company's end. Matter of fact, they talked about I, I was was pretty vocal about some of my frustration, and I believe they're flying a group up from Alabama to sit down and talk with me. But I will check on that today. I thought that had been fixed and rectified being up there, um, so I'll kind of see what the holdup is or what the issues are. Sometimes it's coding. Um, I know that we had the last two weeks we had about about 100 reports we had to go back 
uh, it was about seven or eight per month that we had to go back and make sure we're signed off on, that we're updated, and those type of things. So that might have something to do with it to make sure everything's straight. I know I don't want to post stuff that's not accurate. I want to make sure that the, the things are, are correct. So we'll look at that. Mr. Barnes, it's good to have you on board. It's Mr. Mr. Barnes, thank you so much, my friend. Good to have you on board today. I appreciate you. I'm doing good. Um, it's been a, uh, you know, we had a rough spatch on Friday with the homicide. We're going to talk about that. Uh, but there was an arrest within a minute. Um, it was a domestic-related homicide and very, very tragic. Um, but yeah, it, uh, that's, that was that was Friday afternoon. So I was here late Friday. Um, we were coming off the long weekend last weekend with the marathon. I thought that was was really great. And um, but yeah, I'm doing good, and I appreciate that, my friend. Thank you, and, and I appreciate everything you're doing in this community. And I appreciate you being logging in, and saying hello today. Uh, Find me a big enough parking lot, and we'll come to you. Yeah, I'll tell you, Ashlyn, you all got you all got all the land up there. You, you guys got all, all the space, and uh, I like I like to take our show on the road a little bit. So uh, I look forward to seeing you, my friend. Uh, Washington, I think, was the last one. Yeah. Jordan, yeah. Uh, good afternoon, Chief. I'm disappointed with one of your dispatchers telling me to block my phone because some kids were playing on my phone. I was looking for help, and they made it look like, no, and they made it. Okay. They made it look like I was big. You know, uh, Ms. White, I saw that report. You know, I don't I don't know how the conversation went. We do get calls a lot about um, people are sending me messages and they're calling my phone and hanging up and they're pranking me. So, it, it you know, what we will often tell people is it might be good to change the number if you can block a number. I know there's things on social media, um, but I did read that. And I asked Captain Morgan Tejans to reach out to you. He's the captain down there. We put a captain in our dispatch division uh, in the middle of last year as we reorganized some things. Uh, he's a great guy. Uh, but I did read that report, uh, and I, from what I understand, there was someone who's been calling your phone and, and just causing problems, and, and they told you to block it. So um, I, I don't know how the conversation went. He's going to look into that. I don't know if it was. It, but at the end of the day, you know, the, the dispatchers don't have that law enforcement background. Uh, and I'm not trying to make excuses for him, so please don't take it that way. Because I did ask Tejans. We, we wrote it up and documented to ask Morgan Te Captain Tejans to call you. So if that doesn't happen, please let me know. But um, it may have been where they were just trying to give you some advice about, you know, do you, do you block the phone? We're probably not going to go take out warrants on our end for someone doing that. We can look at it, but uh, that, that's something that we, we might have to have you take the lead on. If you know who that person is, and what, unless they're making like idle threats, like we're going to bomb this or we're going to do that, uh, but if it's someone calling you, and I don't know if there's a past relationship or, but, but I, I don't know exactly what the dispatcher said, but I did ask Captain T just to look into it and report back to me by this Friday, for kind of what that situation is. So if you haven't heard anything, if you just message me directly or message uh, uh, our our, our um, Facebook page, Facebook page here. I can follow up with you, but I did see that report. I saw I saw the email when it came through, and uh, I've asked him for a report back to me on Friday. So I don't want you to think it fell on deaf ears. I did read that, and thank you for bringing it. Thank you for bringing it up. I want to I want to look into it. Uh, can I go run a boat? Oh, Joyce, I got we got Joyce, right? Yeah, we got Joyce. And then who's about Joyce? I just want to make sure I didn't miss yeah, anybody. Yeah, um, you just oh, Miss Joyce, good. Yeah, uh, and for, uh, Chief. Were you able to reach out to anyone about the concern for the kids that walk to school in old, old, old courthouse? So I talked to the, the precinct captain and some of the officers there that will do their best if they're not on a radio call to, to come by. But uh, as far as the traffic, that if you if you want to you know reroute or anything like that, that's a traffic engineering thing. So you probably need a little bit more information on on kids that are walking to school if it's if it's traffic if it's if it's um, I don't want if it's the the layout, um, but it's not it, it it you know there's only so much only so much we can do if it's speeding in the area, that's something that we can we can address. But if it's the pattern and a different route of picking up kids or dropping kids off or kids just walking uh, in the distance, um, but I did I did talk to the precinct captain. They told me that they would look into it. And there's a couple calls downtown about. If there, I want to know if there's any other complaints or any other issues or concerns about uh, people walking in that area. If there's been any any other calls for service over the last six months, I just kind of like take a look at that and, and is it what are other people's perspective if they have any, if they have any. So um, I don't know if that answers your question. Answer that, but I, I, 
you know, I, I remember um, talking with the captain, the sector lieutenant, the officers that work up there, and then a couple calls downtown. Robin, you're most welcome in my honor. Oh, wow, thank you so much. New Hampshire, you had a few warm days recently. Spring is just around the corner. I can't wait. Um, it's nice not to go out and, and, but I'll tell you, here in Virginia, it'll be 30s one day and snow flurries in the air, and the next day it's 55 and the sun's out. The next day it's 72 and then we're back in the 40s. So we're trying to we're, we're trying to still figure out the weather here in Virginia, but we're working on it. But that was a very very nice gift, and I it just really the thought it really meant a lot, and I appreciate that. Uh, Regina, hello, Chief Drew. Regina, Women's Worth Empowerment. You are you are doing a great job. Well, wow, thank you so much. I hope you're doing well. Thanks for being in, in today. I, I appreciate that. Uh, we actually have a, another uh, leadership uh, in smaller segments, kind of like work sessions, if you will, coming up. Uh, it's on. It's this month, um, the 23rd. Uh, they're going to do it in our southeast community, and they're offering it to um, our, our women's, uh, women, female officers, um, just kind of follow up from the last session we had. So I'm excited about that. I'm really getting good feedback from the our, 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 some of the female leadership in the department, but it's really something I, I want to really push, you know, more female leadership in, in, in Newport News. And as we try to bring in more, we took part in the uh, 30 for 30. So L Lieutenant Ross and some of the other leadership here, we talked about uh, that 30% of our department would be female by the year 2030. And I think we're right around 20% right now. Um, certainly if you count the recruit class that we have in. So um, we're on our way and I just want to stay committed and really try to hit that goal. Uh, and they're doing, they're just doing a phenomenal job. So thank you so much. Thanks, Deanna. Hold on, let me go back up. Uh, right, there you go. Dan, uh, I have called the police assistant three or four times now and each time I've called, no one was ever dispatched to me, not until two or three hours later. I feel so unsafe here. Um, I feel so unsafe here. You can even you can't even rely on police showing up to assist when it's needed. I understand procedure. However, who decides what is more important? Someone who is allegedly dying or someone who has a gun held to their head begging for their life? I don't understand. Deanna, you got to help me. I don't know what call we're talking about. I don't know where we're talking about, and I don't know when you call. So I understand what you're saying, but, um, you know, we don't, we, don't, we don't have a situation where we don't send officers and we don't dispatch. Every call, every time a call comes in, it's tagged automatically by a computer system. That's not by human. Uh, they get the information and it's dispatched. Now, if there's a call, then we get something from, if someone calls here and it's a, a Hampton call, we would transfer that. But we don't, we don't have things where we don't respond to. Now, we do have a priority list. So if we're responding to a critical incident and someone calls about loud noise, it may take us a while to get to that call. But if there's something critical, and, I, and like I said, and I'm not downplaying because I don't know what I don't know when you called, I don't know what the call is, I don't know the area you live in. I'm just reading here that you, you said that no one showed up, and that would be hard for me to believe um, because those calls are audited um, and they're time stamped, right? So, and even if there hasn't been, if hasn't, someone hasn't responded in three to five minutes, it beeps, and if there's been no no response from an officer, it beeps. Um, so I, I don't, you got to give me a little bit more than that, or if you want to talk offline and call me directly or message me, I'd be glad to talk to you, but I'm, I'm not, when I'm reading your post here, I'm not seeing a time, I'm not seeing an address, I'm not seeing what type of call it was, you know, and sometimes people will call and say, I don't want to see the police, well, so, 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 I just, you got to give me a little bit more than that, um, you also say, I also don't understand why people don't yield at, at signs here, so if the issue is traffic or speeding, uh, in certain areas, I will tell you that we will send officers when we have those free. But time of day, there may have been something critical going on. If it, I can tell you, like if it was, I'm just guessing because I'm not seeing it on here. But if you sent, if it was Monday, or sorry, Friday at, at, at between 12 and 5, we had we had some critical things going on in our city. If it's a speeding complaint, but I'm not seeing anything. Um, I just don't, I don't, I don't see an, an address, a time frame, what type of call or anything. So. If you can help me out a little bit, maybe I could be a little bit more. I'm just kind of, I don't know how to respond. I don't know what, but I don't believe that we're not responding to calls because they're, they're, they can't. I mean, it pops up on a screen. It has to be there. Um, I also don't understand why people don't yield at yield signs here. So, yeah, yeah I, 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 I see people yield at yield signs. Is there an intersection or area or geographical area that you're talking about? 
Um, you know, we have target locations where we see most of our accidents. Uh, there was a horrific accident over the weekend. Um, we found out some more information about that. But yeah, when, when you say yield signs here, I just don't know. you got to help me a little bit. And I want to help you. And I, I'm in, I just, um, but I don't, I don't have the information. I, 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 you got to send me something. Um, Ms. Washington, I handled the entire situation professionally. I don't know these people, but I will be okay. Granby High School is on lockdown. Granby High School. Yeah, that's in that's in Norfolk. Yeah, yeah there it's it was on lockdown, but um, yeah. Okay, so you're Miss Washington's just telling me about yeah. Granby High School. Okay. Uh, let me see, Danielle. Can we increase police presence on Box Box? Let's go back up. Yeah. On Boxley, people are excessively speeding and also speeding around cars to cut them off. So that's exactly what I need. Uh, uh, thank you. So you give me a, a, a location. I'm very familiar with Boxley up there around Mechanicsville. Um, so yeah, I can send that to the precinct captain. I would ask you, uh, when you see them speeding, is it uh, more in the early morning, the afternoon, or the evening? And is it during the week or more on the weekends? Um, but that'll just give me that'll just give me some some uh, time frames and barriers that I can send to the precinct captain. I will tell you uh, right now our traffic division, which I think is important to have, uh, we created that two years ago, but because of shortages, right? And and, and right now I have, I'm deficient about 70 officers. We had to absorb our traffic division back into patrol, so I haven't been able to put as much emphasis as I, as I, as I want to. I think we need dedicated at speeding in certain areas. We have speed trailers that we can move around. Some people think they're very effective. Some people think they don't do anything at all. And I understand that. It's not a solve all, but it is a tool um, that I do. I, my plan is to bring the traffic division back. One of the things I want to talk to you all today about is how we look in recruiting and where we look at staffing. So it's true that there are set, we have 70 officers down right now. However, um, we have 13 in the academy class that graduate next week on the 23rd. We have 27 that graduate in August. And then we are looking for another 25 to 30 to start the academy in April. We're starting to hire for that now, and they will graduate in October. So that class in October, those positions, that will free up our traffic and canine division. And we, we just met uh, last week to determine how we wanted that to look and how we wanted that to work. And we will be putting that back as a standalone. So we're able to move six, seven, eight traffic officers into different parts of the city to address primarily speeding, uh, our high locations where we have crashes or, or traffic accidents, uh, and areas of concern that people have. That I have a group that just focuses on that. that. That's our primary focus. So I'm looking forward to that. But it's going to take me a while to get there because of some shortages we have. And, and we have to prioritize calls. So. But yeah, that's a great that's a great point. But I will send that out to the precinct, so the officers, if they're not on calls, that they can hit that area of Boxley. I'm very familiar with that uh, Boxley, the school, the high school up there, and all that. So that's good. Um, uh, they have apologized every time it's happened, but yes, sir, they they haven't showed up when I have had a house broken into, and had a had a man outside my house pleasure him himself. So I'm still looking for sorry. So it's not speeding. It's it's uh, yeah. I, Okay, okay. So, I guess you've talked to someone then. Um, but if you'll, if you're able to message me, I don't know if you can do that without it being public. Yeah, just message uh, our Facebook Messenger and just give us the the time, like when it happened, the time. So, I'm not the most tech savvy person, so I apologize. <laughs> but if you can Facebook message me, yeah, um, the address or the house, I can look that up and find out what the situation is. Or if you can tell me who you talk to, I can talk to whoever you talk to and find out what the situation is. Uh, Christy, uh, these police officers are doing the absolute best they can. Thank God for Christy. I appreciate that. Thank you. You know, but and, and, and I'll tell you, um, but there, you know, it, it, I like these conversations so people can bring things up and let me know the things we need to look in, look at. Right? I never want to get to the point where we're oh we're just great, and, you know. But we're, we're human. We're going to make mistakes, and you know I can't be everywhere at once. I, I will tell you all this very publicly. I believe this department, for the city size, we're about 186,000 people, fastly approaching 190,000 people. This police department, I would like to see us at 500, uh, strength of 500. We're authorized right now 470, um, but when I hire someone, it takes me seven or eight months to train them. 
right? So even when I hire them from that date, it's seven months before they're on the road. So we've got a push. Um, like other departments, we've had we experienced some losses last year that now we're trying to catch up for. Uh, and being down 70 officers, that's an impact of some things. So I want to be very, very clear. We have to prioritize calls that we go to first. We're going to go to a robbery or a shooting or a, a burglary. That's going to take precedence over speeding and shoplifting. We'll get there, um, but but knowing those things, we have put a heavy effort into our recruiting. And like I said, 13 that graduate next week. Uh, the majority of that class is going to be going to the north part of the city. Um, 20, 27, it will graduate in August. Uh, that should fill a lot of our vacancies. And then that last class that will graduate in October, those positions are pretty much our traffic and canine positions. And my plan is to move them back out into their own standalone entity. So I appreciate that. But yeah, please, if, you know, concerns and issues that you have, please send to me. And it allows us to address, you know, it's the only way we get better. But I, I, mean, I really appreciate that comment. Thank you. Um, I would hi Keith, I would highly recommend you partake in the Citizens Academy when available. Yep. Uh, Keith, so the Citizens Academy we have here in our city, we run three a year. Uh, Miss Monica White does a phenomenal job. She usually has a class size of about 25. It's a 9, 10, 11 week program. They meet one night a week for a couple hours. And we are very open and share what this the police department has and why we do what we do. Uh, there's a class on narcotics, there's a class on gangs, there's a class on traffic investigations, there's a class on uh, how, how we deal with officers who see some of the most horrific things. I think we had three suicides in our city in the last four days that officers had responded to, and some of them have been very, very tragic. Um, you, you have a class on homicide. Why, why might there be a, a body that's, that's left because we have to process that scene? It's not, you know, it's not like on TV where you come in and pick, pick that individual up and take them to the, to the morgue. It's, there's evidence there that has to be photographed and, and processed. And, we have to wait till the medical examiner gives us clearance to remove that body. So there's a lot of things that go into place, and that Citizens Academy allow us to talk to individuals and share it and, and questions back and forth. It talks about our use of force policy. Those are the same citizens that I get and ask to sit on our use of force review board to help uh, help me out to look at our policies and procedures, to look at our officers, our value, and to evaluate ourselves from citizens' eyes. That's very very beneficial. So uh, the, the Citizens Academy is great. If anybody is interested in that. You can send us an email or message us, and we'll try to get you in. It is a great opportunity. They're actually, they are accepting applications for the next one that starts in April. That deadline is March 25th. So our next, so there's a current class in. I got to see them a couple weeks ago. The next class starts in April. In April. And they're asking for people who are interested to send in an application by the 25th. You can find the applications. On our page. And then uh, at the end of this, Facebook I'll, page. I'll pin it. I'll pin the, the link to it, to the application, in the comments. Very good. So we're going to we'll post the application process and the link and all that. If it's something you're interested, I, I, I tell you, it is phenomenal. Uh, and what we've seen is people who have gone through it have and brought friends with them or told others who have come and like, why did you decide to do Oh, I've heard about it from my friend. I just really wanted to experience So it's a great opportunity. Uh, uh, Daniel, been in the evening and the weekend as of late. This, however, is when I'm usually running around. Uh, grounds of those. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Clark. I appreciate that. And we'll, we'll take a look at it. And like I said, I will, I will get that to the, uh, to the precinct captain. Uh, Deanna, thank you. I appreciate it. And thank you for bringing it to my attention. I appreciate that. Um, Christy, I think it would I think it would be really nice if some of the people who complain about the police thinking they are not doing their job should go on a ride along to see just... <laughs> so uh, I'll tell you, Christy, it, it's okay. You know, it, it, I don't I don't take it that way. Um, and I don't I don't take it as people complaining. I take it as people having having some concerns uh, and people get frustrated. I get that. Listen, I know when I sit here in this chair that I'm, I'm opening myself up and, and exposing, I, I want to. If I was at a community meeting, if I was in a community, it's okay. I don't, I don't take that stuff personally. I want to make sure that at least we're trying to do the very best we can. Does that mean we're going to knock it out of the park every time? Absolutely not. We make mistakes. We don't get it right. We're human. This badge and these patches don't mean we're better than anybody else. What it does mean, though, is that we've sworn oath to try to help other people, that we run into traumatic and critical situations, that we are volunteering to see things that I wish no one would ever see. There's an individual that committed suicide last night in a graphic way, and officers went in that house, and they saw that. 
Now, I know that is a tr tragic loss to a family, and I am so sorry. When I got the phone call, uh, my heart broke when I, when I heard about what happened. And then the next comment was, did officers enter the house? And the response was, yes, sir, they did. And that was tragic. It was tragic. I need to make sure that those officers are okay. So today, I met with my assistant, and each of those officers who entered that house and saw, responded, um, they're all going to have a, a visit with our department psychologist. Not because anything's wrong with them, because I care about them. But those, those type things, that's what we volunteer for. So when, when citizens tell us, hey, I didn't see an officer here, I didn't see an officer there, I don't take offense to that. Um, some things I have to question. Uh, usually there's a, a, a reason that, that maybe some way it didn't get communicated. Well, I called the police and I didn't see them. Well, we sent an unmarked car. Oh, well, I called the police and I don't, I don't know if they, they responded or not. Well, if you didn't want to have a, if, you, if the dispatcher said, do you want the police to call you back and tell you, and he, no, I don't, then you may not know. Um, there's some things that if we're, if there's a drug complaint at a particular house, I called the police to come by and look at it. We may be doing an operation there where we're doing some surveillance and we don't want a police car to come by. And some of those things we can tell you and some of those things we can't. So it's just, there's, there's, there's usually a good explanation. Well, I, yeah, uh, the individual was coming to that house, but he had to stop because there was a car accident on the way, so it took him uh, 20 minutes longer before he could get, get to that location. Uh, those, those things happen. Uh, but it's great. I, I, I appreciate and I want that feedback, and I think that's how we become transparent. Now, you mentioned, Misty, you mentioned the ride-alongs. That is a great program. It is very eye-opening to see um, what's going on in our community, the type of calls that, that officers go to. You know, it's one thing to sit back and, you know, what this officer do at 2.30? It's another to be driving around at 2.30 in the morning and get a call of shots fired and pull up and get out and walk through that backyard or walk down that street or walk in that block or walk through that cut and not knowing what you're going to run into. That is a different, your heart beats at a different rate, I promise you. Um, but if anyone wants to do ride-alongs, we have a ride-along program um, that you're more than welcome to, uh, to, to experience a little bit and feel what it's like to talk to an officer uh, uh, driving through our city. Uh, and I think it's a great insight to what goes on. You don't have to do the whole shift. If you want to just do a couple hours, we can facilitate that. Uh, but it is, when you hear that radio and, the, and you hear all the different things going on, it, it, it quickly hits you. Um, so, Misty, that is a great point. I want to thank you for bringing that up. It's a really a great opportunity. Rhea, I remember you. I hope you're doing well. I will see you hopefully tomorrow. Um, and it's 1230, so you, shouldn't you be in class too? Be on your lunch break? Uh, but no, I look forward to seeing all you guys. Rhea and uh, Cameron are part of our Young Adult Police Commissioners. You've heard me talk about them before. That is a freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior from every uh, high school in our city. We meet with them every Wednesday for about three hours. Uh, we have conversations about diversity, we talk about debates, we talk about equality, we talk about what our police department does and why we do it. We talk about the dangers of, of drunk driving and, 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 and drugs, I help, but, but I also, I ask them to go on community walks with me. I ask them to help me bridge the gap between police and youth. Um, they go to press conferences with me. They work with the three media outlets, uh, or three news stations, about how to do interviews. Um, I will tell you, um, last year when we had the school shooting, uh, I met with those students and talked to those young adult police commissioners before I did a press conference. And I told them, same thing, with, I, I told them what we had. And I shared things with them that I hadn't shared with the media yet. And we have a, a, a relationship um, they come in here, officers know them. Uh, officers who, lieutenants and captains that, that have moved on or been promoted, they come back and work with these young people because they matter to us. And if you look at us on Facebook or you attend any of our uh, police graduations, our memorial services, our national night out, um, award ceremonies, promotion ceremonies, you will see a young person, a teenager, as one of the guest speakers. Because I'm trying to send a message to this community that the youth of this city, they matter to me. I want the youth to know that. They matter to me. I, I think, I tell, and I love those kids. But I'm also trying to send a message to the men and women who come into this profession, who join this agency and wear this uniform, that the youth of this city matter to me. I want their voices heard, and I want to build relationships. Dr. Lyons, who works with us a lot, 
that advisory role talks a lot about how so many things can be addressed through better communication, relationships, working together. Uh, and I just think it's been a great program. I love the, the kids we get to spend time with, man. Now, look, they give me a hard time. They tease me. Um, and look, the, the days are long gone of getting Domino's pizza. It's like Chick-fil-A, <laughs> Jimmy John's, and special order subs. But it's okay because I value them. I value the, the efforts that they bring. I, let me just say this when we talk about youth. How about the Minchville High School girls basketball team winning the state championship? I was at Minchville when they beat uh, 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 Norview, and and they go up to to Richmond, and I got I got a school resource officer and a sergeant to want to go with them, and I thought that was great. So, are we really going? Yes, I am going to send them. They're that bond they have, where they care about those kids and the SRO of that school. Uh, so they went up there, and now I did I did check in with Officer Washington to make sure they were behaving right and doing well. But they were able to win, and I could just not be more impressed with the. the the girls from Minchville. I understand the boys from Minchville were in the playoffs as well. They had a great run. They had a great season. I want them to know I'm proud of them, and um, I could just not be more impressed. I'm just, I just think that's our future, and I just have a lot of compassion for the youth of this city. I better leave it there. Uh, Mr. Ba- Mr. Barnes, you say it better than I do, my friend. It's community. Communication develops unification. Uh, can I quote you, my friend? I might have just done that. That's a great quote. Thank you. Um, Park and Joyce, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Leek Brown, Police Chief Drew, give me the opportunity to follow my passion to become a Newport News police officer. Leek, let's do it. Um, the ride along, wait, what? Oh, you did a ride along. Okay, so the ride along was the best experience I've ever had. So look, Leek, I got to pay you some money for saying that, my friend. No, that, so exactly what I was just talking about. Here's an individual that's done that. I know has a heart to, to join and, and be a police officer in this city. That's somebody that I want working here, right? Somebody that has that passion. And to go on a ride along, you see. That post didn't come from me. That came from Leek. It is a great, a great opportunity to see what it's like. So I appreciate that you doing that, my friend. I look forward to talking to you. And hopefully we work it out and we work forward to you. Look forward to you joining this department. I'm excited. That's awesome. Uh, Anna. Good afternoon, Chief. Next Citizen Police Academy starts on the 28th of April, and I think we just put that out, right? Yeah. Thank you, Anna. I appreciate that. Uh, Christy, Chief Drew, scroll up just or down for a little yeah. bit for me. Um, you, without a doubt, show your love for officers and the citizens every day. No one should ever say that you don't care. Yeah, Christy, I appreciate that. It means a lot. Um, maybe i got to do a better job of masking it. Um, no, look, I, I this city took a chance on me, has allowed me to be the chief, and I'm very, very humbled. Um, I think this city is made up of tremendous, tremendous people. Um, it's a diverse group, the military that we have here, the shipyard that we have here, um, the diversity in our city and our department, uh, the youth that we have here, the talent they bring, um, Jefferson Lab, uh, just the, the, the different, Ferguson, the, all the different entities that we have here, Cannon, um, school system, uh, the police department, I mean, I'm humbled to be here, and, and I am I'm not going out looking for other things as long as, uh, by the grace of God and the citizens here and the administration want me to be here, I will, I'm, this, is where, this is where I will be. I love the city, I love working here, uh, and the ability. What other job, what other profession do you have where you, you can wake up every morning and you get to help people through the most critical times of their life? Now, people will say hello to you, right? but, but we don't get a lot of calls for service that dial 911 and ask somebody to come over for lunch, stop by for a soda. What we get calls for is a uh, horrible traffic accident, or some type of violent crime, there's a critical incident. Um, my son's injured, my daughter's injured, my mother has Alzheimer's and I can't find her. Um, my son or daughter's missing. There's been a suicide. You know, officers respond to those things, and in those minutes, in those moments, they have the ability to help people, right? They have the ability to help people, and there are not a lot of people standing in line to do that. And this line of work is dangerous. You walk into police headquarters and look up to your right, you'll see all the officers that have given their lives in the line of duty, serving the citizens of this community, serving this great city. And we'll, we'll celebrate their memorial and their life this year. But it is hard. When everyone's running away, when I saw officers running into that school, 
and dealing with parents and, and teenagers and youth, I know what it takes to be an officer. I try to run this department like a family, not like a military organization, not like a business, because I know what people give up to do this job. You miss out on birthdays and anniversaries and ball games and recitals. You miss out on some of those things because you're here. And on your day off, sometimes you're in court. And when you're supposed to get off at a certain time, sometimes you're, you have someone that has to be medically evaluated at the hospital, maybe a mental issue, or that one, sh one shift is short and you're staying over to help that shift, or there's been a critical incident and you're on a traffic post or you're on a, on a crime scene that you just can't leave. I know what people give up to do this job to serve the citizens. Do we always get it right? Absolutely not. But is there a desire to? I wholly believe that. I totally believe that. And this is a great place to work. It's a great city, it's great people, great youth, and uh, I'm very, very humbled. I don't, and I, I do not take the position I'm in. I do not take it lightly. So thank you for allowing me to work, work with you all in your city. Um, no, my, oh, look at this, Rhea. No, my lunch break was two hours ago. I'm in English, it's really boring. <laughs> Rhea, are you out of your mind? Don't be telling get your English teacher mad at me. Turn the dang on phone off and study your English. Right? Nouns and pronouns and all that stuff, right? You're killing me, kid. You're killing me. Chief Drew, we're trying to oh my gosh. Please, if anyone's reading this and you see a post from Rhea, please do not respond and encourage her. She should be studying in school. Uh, Robin, have a great afternoon. Stay safe. I'll catch you this evening. Robin, thank you so much, and I look forward to, to having you back. Uh, Lee Brown, please, Chief Drew, allow me to prove people wrong that I can become an officer. Wow. Wow. I appreciate you, Lee. Thank you, buddy. Sylvia, we are so fortunate to have you leading our... Sylvia, thank you. I appreciate that. That means a lot. Thank you. Christopher, nice, Chief Drew. The team and coaches did well. Uh, let me tell you, I, I, man, I was... Well, I was on... I couldn't get out of the, the gym at the, I guess, the finals, right, in Mitchville, at the game in Mitchville, because it went into overtime, then overtime again, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. It was just like pins and needles, man, and they pulled it out, and they did such a great job up in up in Richmond, uh, and I understand they won by a pretty big margin up there. So, um, But I'll tell you, I'm just as proud as the boys, too. Uh, I, I was getting updates on my phone of the boys' game and watching the girls' game, and I'll tell you, we had like X amount of officers working the girls' game at Mitchville, right? And all these other officers show up. See, you get me choked up now. All these other officers show up. They didn't come there to work the game. They come there to see the girls play. And that means to me they're invested in the youth of this city. They cared about that outcome. And that matters to me. I, I didn't, that matters to me. Uh, uh, Chief, I was supposed to have a sit down with you in February the 11th, but never got the opportunity. Please give me the opportunity to have Lee, we will meet. We will talk, my friend. Um, February 11th. I don't know what was going on February 11th. All right, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Faith. Good afternoon, uh, Chief Drew. Hope your birthday was awesome. Thanks for all that you do, city and community. Faith, thank you so much. The birthday was back in February. I'm a year older now. I got to keep my hair cut short. I want to be great to show, but thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, Keith, please bring the young adult. Please. You want me to bring all those high school students up to Ashland? Do you know what they'll do up in Ashland? Oh, my gosh. Uh, we love to have them. Uh, we love to showcase the program. Uh, police farmers from across Virginia. Uh, no, Cameron follows our face. Yeah, Cameron does. Cameron is amazing. You know, they elected their leader, so we have a uh, president, two vice presidents, and a secretary. As a matter of fact, um, TV outlet uh, 13? Channel 13. Th Channel 13 came and interviewed them, and they talked a little bit to Drew and, and, and Carson, Carson with a K. They talked to him a little bit about, um, you know, what does this mean to you? And to hear them say, you know, we have a voice. She's very open and transparent with us that we talk about bridging the gap between youth and police. That's exactly, I couldn't say it better. I, and I didn't give them a script. And uh, I think they out there, I think they talked to the reporter for like 45 minutes, right? So I was like, oh my gosh. But I love those kids, man. And, and that youth is our future. Victoria. Chief Drew, the residents of Cypress Terrace oh, let me scroll back, need a one-on-one -on -one with you ASAP. Oh, Sorry. It's okay. We're getting a letter. No, it's okay. Uh, we heard. Nope. Uh, I can get like one word in for the yeah. new, new text comment. 
One on one with you ASAP. The random shootings are out of control. We hired you for change. We need an intervention in our community. Please before we, we please before more lives are lost. Um, Terrace, Cypress Terrace. So Victoria, so um, yep. Uh, now I'd be glad to meet with you. I have no problem with that. But it's very very important that we work in hand in hand with our precinct captain and our sector lieutenant of that area. So if that's not happening. Like if I ask you, who is your precinct captain? Who is your sector lieutenant? You should know that. You should be able to know that the captain and the lieutenant that are responsible, that control immediate manpower for that neighborhood. Um, so yeah, um, I'd be glad, I have no, I'd love to sit down and talk with you. Um, we had our crime, we do our crime here two days a week, every Monday and every Thursday. Every Monday at one o'clock from one to three and every Thursday from one to three, we sit down and we go over the crime that's happened situation we've had. We've had two homicides this year. Both of those homicides have been cleared. Um, one happened uh, early, late part of January, early part of February. The other one happened um, in the north part of our city on on, um, on, on Monday after, or Friday afternoon. When they both, the, the first homicide was cleared within two days. The second homicide was cleared within about 15 minutes. Um, and then our shootings, we had three different shootings over the weekend. Our shootings are down from last year, about 25% down. But that doesn't mean that an individual who suffered a gunshot wound or a neighborhood that had a shooting, that doesn't, I don't care that we're 25% down, right? Someone, someone happened in my neighborhood. Um, so I'd be glad to sit down and talk with you. Um, but it's important for me that there's a relationship between you, your organization, your neighborhood, and the captain and the lieutenant that are directly responsible. So I'm looking at it from here. I need that captain that has daily interaction, that lieutenant has daily interaction, that are given officers, the 12 officers that come to work, that they know what area to patrol in and situations. Uh, but I would also ask you, is there a particular uh, apartment or a house or a block that we're seeing problems in? Are there, are there issues there at a certain time frame? I'm not asking you to come out and hold up a sign, but 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 yeah, so maybe, maybe a sit-down meeting would be fantastic and we can certainly talk about it. But I'd love to sit down and, and talk with you and whoever um, uh, and have those conversations. And I will say this, while we're here, being open and transparent, people in that neighborhood, in Cypress Terrace, right? Yes. They know what's going on there. They know, they know who the problems are and they know what's happening in that, in, that, in that neighborhood. People have to get involved. Community, criminal element will only do things in a community where communities allow it. Now, I know, well, Chief, you don't live here. I get that. And I, and I understand that with all due respect, we come and then we leave and then people, but however, the alternative is to just let people come in and take over your community. So I'm not asking you to stand on a corner and testify. I'm not asking you to, to stand out and hold a sign up. Hey, I'm the one that said this or said that. But if there's a neighborhood watch or a neighborhood coalition or a group there that look out, individuals are not going to come break into cars so they know people are going to call the police. They're going to go to neighborhoods where people don't call the police. Well, hey, look, the citizens don't care what goes on here, so these are neighborhoods I'm going to break into. I don't have an officer to put in every neighborhood. Now, I would like to see our numbers increase. I'd like to do some different things in some communities, but I need those communities to, to get engaged. And I cannot tell you the number of shootings that we go on, the number of domestics that we go on, the number of fights in the neighborhood that we go on, where people are standing around and nobody wants to talk about. Nobody wants to tell us, this is the house, this is the individual, this is the car. So we try other things, right? We try surveillances, we try technology, we try uh, to look at cameras that are in the area. But there is no better, no better information than the people who live in that community, who know what's going on. Because I can tell you, there are, there are four or five homicides that we could close right now that we know Steve or whoever saw it. But they don't want to come forward. So we have to find another way to do that. And it's one of the frustrations. But I understand that you live in that neighborhood or people live in that particular neighborhood. But I'm not asking you to come out and, and, and jump up and down and say, hey, it's me. What I am asking you to do is pick up a phone and call us. This is the house that's the problem. And let's work it together. But I would, I'm more than willing to sit down and, and talk with you. And I, but I just want to make sure that the captain and the lieutenant are involved because they deal with neighborhoods like that every single day. That's a great point, so thank you. Uh, Annette, I'm glad that our city and our kids and our safety matter to you. Talk is cheap, but you continue to show your love and passion for the people in the community. And then I appreciate that. Um, like I said, I was with them uh, 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 last week 
and the media media came here and did interviews with them and and what I liked is just they didn't I was able to sit back and just watch those kids talk to the media and tell them what the program meant to them tell them their interaction and that mattered that mattered to me so thank you uh, Rhea, I hate you. Did you get in trouble in class? <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call your teacher and tell her to check your phone. Uh, Stephanie, best, uh, best chief. Oh wow, Stephanie, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I don't know if that's accurate, but I, I'm sur- I certainly try. I, I appreciate that. Uh, Christy, can you start a cert- certified emergency response team with Newport News? This is more towards the department, but something you could do with the police department as well. The community is here. Uh, chief Munkin. Contact the fire chief, Chief Monk in Hampton. He can tell you about it. So, Christy, I did 25 years in Richmond, Virginia. I've been down here almost four. I know very much about that CERT, what the CERT is, and it is a great program. But I also know that we've had some challenges with shortages. I know we've had some challenges with COVID about people being out and be together. So I am all for it. Uh, I'm very well versed in it. I used to oversee it in Richmond. Um, and it's very, very valuable. But uh, you got to remember the last two years, we've kind of shut some things down and haven't been able to get it around. We're just kind of coming out of that. And I know some people are still hesitant about it, but I'm, I'm all for it, and I, I do believe it is a great program. So I'm 100% with you. Uh, Victoria, no idea. No idea to wait. No idea to what? Oh, she was the one that wants to do a, mm-hmm. uh, a one-on-one uh, about oh, she's saying stars. you're saying no, Victoria. Are you saying no idea who your captain and lieutenant are? Then there you go. That's a problem. I'm not saying it's your fault. That's a problem. But but you should know. You should know who your captain is. You should know who your lieutenant is, because when you tell me about, we can sit down and talk, and, and I've got a whole city. We've divided our city up. Our city's very linear, right? It's long. We have a precinct in the north, a precinct in the central, and a precinct in the south. And each one of those precincts have about a hundred officers there. A captain, three lieutenants, one, two, three, four, five, six, 12 sergeants or corporals, and and about 100, about 85 to 90 officers. And they patrol your neighborhood, right? Those officers have beats. So we got to get, we got to make contact. We got to get you hooked up. So if you, Victoria, if you can send me a number, just a name and a number to call you, right? If you can message me that, I'll get the captain to call you today or I'll call you today myself and make an introduction between you and the captain. And then maybe before, no, 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 not maybe. We talk about action, right? You send me a number. I will call you as soon as I'm done here. Then I will get you hooked up and have the captain of the precinct call you today. And I'll be back on at 6 o'clock this evening, right? Is that the right time, 6 this evening? Yes. And I want you to come back on and tell me if you had a conversation with the captain or not. Let's make that, let's just not talk about it. Let's put action to it. I'll, you send me a number. I'll call you as soon as I'm done here. And then I want the precinct captain or lieutenant to call you, and I want you to come back at six o'clock and say, "Chief, they talked to me." Is that fair? Let's do that. Uh, Keith, I saw the video of Cameron and the other police commissioners uh, speaking with city council. We shared it on our page, and the other departments could hear them speak. Uh, my lunch is over. Got to go. But yeah, get back to work, my friend. Rita, she's right. Put your phone down. That's right. Uh, no, I, I I appreciate that, Keith. We did. We took. Uh, uh, several of the members came and sat in the meeting, the city council meeting, but the, the president, the two vice presidents, and the secretary all spoke. Uh, they kept it right around three, three and a half minutes, and they just talked about um, bringing their voice to the conversation. How do they feel about school resource officers? How are they bridging the gap between police and, and the community, um, and police and youth, and, and what they get out of the program? So I, 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 was, I was very impressed. And I didn't, I didn't write it. I didn't write it. They just went up and had a conversation. Uh, but I think it's important for the leaders of our community to see them, to talk to them. So thank you for that, my friend. Thank you for sharing that. Dawn, uh, good afternoon. was wondering if the drive through have stopped in Deer Run. I know several residents that haven't seen you all driving through patrolling at night lately. Definitely made us feel better after the incident on Natalie Circle. So Dawn, I'm not familiar when you say, has the drive throughs stopped in Deer Run? Um, Again, um, I would. So I, I'm, I'm not sure what you're referring to when you say you don't see officers there driving through it at night. Um, but again, your precinct captain and your precinct lieutenant, they should be having those conversations. Or if you're concerned, that's what I want you to talk with 
um, to make sure that there's a, a, a hate, you know, we're not seeing it. Now, are you just, is there a crime issue? Is there a concern there? Or we're just not seeing as many officers as we used to see? Share a little bit with it, kind of give me an idea of kind of what we're, what we're talking about. Rhea, I ain't going to talk to you. Let me scroll down. Is that, am I all caught up? Yep. All right, so a couple of things I want to talk. We have 13 recruits graduating the academy at the end of March on the 23rd. We got another 25, 26, 27. They're going to graduate in August, and we're starting to hire for the class in April, which will graduate in October. We're going to. I think we have four or five officers uh, that are laddering here from other agencies. I'm not. I'm not going out trying to steal people, but if someone's not happy with that and they want to try to, whatever it is, I get to sit down with them, meet with them one on one, talk to them a little bit about our city and if it's a better fit for them or where they want to be. And, and they're willing to do this job, then I want them. But I'll tell you what I'm looking for. It's no secret. What I'm looking for are people who think outside the box, people that have a, a heart for people, uh, people that care about youth, uh, people who want to work in our community, people that will talk to people and engage people uh, and solve problems. We can't police the same way we did in 1985. Policing changes and evolves. When I started, I went to a call, we wrote a report, we may or may not make an arrest, and we're on to the next call, right? Remember my sergeant. Drew, keep that screen clear. You got two calls pending, right? Today, people want you to interact with them, get involved, right? Help them solve their problem or get them with the right resource. I think we saw that from some of the posts we saw today. That's what I'm looking for. I can teach anybody to write a report, the equipment that we have on our belt, our policies and procedures, but I cannot teach someone to care about someone else. They get that from their upbringing, from their parents, from their faith, uh, from people who have mentored them along the way as they've developed. I'm looking for people who come into this department and care about other people. Because if we do that, if that's our foundation, it builds a better relationship and better opportunities when we're on the street responding to those calls. That it's not, that the citizens we respond to is not just a number in our CAD system, it's not just a number on our computer screen, it's a family. It's an individual. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, we've had two homicides in our city so far. Uh, both of those have been cleared. Uh, the first one back in late January, early February was cleared within two days and Friday. Uh, that was a domestic violence homicide was cleared right away. Our shootings are down about 25% from where they were this time last year. But we, that's, that doesn't, those who got suffered gunshot wounds are still an issue and it's still an issue in the community. But let me say this about, about the shootings. What we're not seeing is individuals go out and shoot just someone randomly. We see individuals getting shot over drug deals. We see individuals getting shot over arguments. We see individuals getting shot over alcohol. We're seeing individuals getting shot that may belong in different groups or different gangs. We see individuals getting shot because they're beefing back and forth on social media. We're not just seeing people at random go out and shoot someone. We're not seeing that. Most of our shootings are people who know each other, who have some type of, of issue going on. Our homicides, both incidents, were people who knew each other. One was family-oriented. So it's hard for us, to, and, and sometimes people who are involved in, our, in, the, in these shootings, they don't want to talk to the police about it. They know who shot them, but they don't want to talk to the police about it. They, oh, we're going to handle it ourselves, which creates more issues, right? So that's why we have to ask the residents who live in these communities, and I wish, it was an, I wish, I wish all our shootings and homicides happened in one spot. I could put a geographic fence and I put all my resources there, but that's not the case. That's not the case. Um, individuals that go to a bar and drink and then after the bar they get in a fight in the parking lot and sort of just going home or calling a, a taxi or Uber or Lyft, they decide to reach into the car in their glove box and pull out a firearm and shoot the individual that they're fighting with or hit someone in the head or, or face with a beer bottle. So I want to make sure that when we talk about crime, that, that it's, oh my gosh, we're afraid to live in our city. Individuals that are having those acts against people are having those acts against people they know that are going back and forth. The majority, the majority. We cleared 72% of our homicides last year. Just about every homicide, people knew each other. And it's the same with our shootings. So I have to ask our citizens to let us know what apartment or what house do you see people coming and going from? Where you see people coming and going all night long? What vehicles do you see where someone might take a firearm out and carry it inside? I have a video in our real-time crime center. I have a video of an individual who pu pulled up to a uh, one o'clock in the afternoon. Who pulls up, gets out of his car, takes his firearm rifle, 
pulls it out, walks into the store, walks back out of the store, and there's probably 18 people standing around. Five or six come over, and he shows them the gun. One o'clock in the a school bus drives by. You know how many calls we got? Zero. And because we had surveillance, we were able to follow that vehicle, stop it, and arrest the individual, and remove that freaking assault rifle. Did I say freaking? Yeah. I did. I said freaking. Yes. We were able to remove that assault rifle. Now, it concerns me that there were no calls about that. Individuals will only do in neighborhood and communities what neighborhood and communities allow them to do. And I understand the fear and the perception of fear. Well, if I get involved, they're going to know it was me. All I'm asking you to do is make a call. Have every light off in your house and call me. Text us, 911. I don't want to, I don't want to be contacted. I don't want anybody to come to the door, but I'm telling you, the blue car with the white male and the bald head, he's out here and he's got a gun in his hand. We need to know that. I'm just asking you to help me. We have to do it together. Public safety is everyone's responsibility, not just the police officers. I only have a limited number, but there's 186,000 citizens. I appreciate, uh, wait, did I catch up here? Uh, there's Dawn. one line from Don again. There was a shooting on Natalie Circle and Deer Run. Officers increased patrol the first week, but it tapered off. Uh, apartment officer is no help, so I thought I'd ask. Thank you for all you do and your officers have done. Hey, Don, uh, when, when was the shooting? When, when did that happen up in Deer Park? Was it uh, uh, er, earlier in the year or towards the end of last year or recently? Just tell me with a little bit of a time frame there. Uh, but I, I appreciate that. I appreciate your, your chiming in with us today. So it's 101. We've done pretty good on time. Um, I think I hit on everything I wanted to t touch base on. Um, I appreciate everything, those that have taken time today, and if you're able to watch this later, fantastic. I'll be back at 6 o'clock um, just to sit down and field any questions that I, that I can. I hope I get some people that I've talked to directly here. I hope you send me some messages, um, laid out some challenges that I'm able about three weeks ago. Thanks, Dawn. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, that have laid out some challenges. And if you want to send me a number that I can talk to you, uh, I look forward to it. Um, but I, I do believe we're not going to fix anything overnight. But I do believe we can make some improvements, all of us, right? taking our neighborhood and our communities back, not tolerating that, not tolerating that type of violence. Uh, and I will, you know, I, I, talking about being transparent, I can tell you that there are three larger cases that we're working on that you're going to see some impact over the summer. Um, but I can't talk about those cases. Um, I appreciate all of you. I appreciate what you do. Please be safe. Please slow down. There was a pretty horrific accident on Friday. Nope. Sunday. Uh, I got called on and uh, Chief Grinstead actually went to that scene and, and replied back to me a little bit. An individual uh, lost his life um, in just a single vehicle accident. Um, but yeah, together we can do a lot of great things. Um, uh, Richard, Chief, oh wait, Christy, how do we contact you? So Christy, and so I'm, I'm, I hope I'm saying this right. Um, if you instant message us or if you message us through Facebook and just put in your number, I will call you directly. Um, oh, there you go. All right, we're going to get that number down. We'll write that number down, and then we'll, we'll get it off so I don't have your number out here. Uh, we'll go from there. Uh, Richard, Chief Drew, kudos from upstate New York. Your officers responded to an incident this past October and were nothing but professional. How they kept their cool is beyond me. Richard, I appreciate that. I know sometimes people try to antagonize and pull their cell phones out and try to get officers, push them over the edge. I get that. And it means a lot that you say that, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, it's hard. Even sometimes I get frustrated. Uh, uh, but I, I really I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Christy will be talking to you. Rhea, English, right? And get your homework done. You guys take care. Love you all. Please be safe. And I'll be back at 6 o'clock this evening. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.